this is very, very special. What have you got? It is. Well, look, uh, you know, we've been accused recently of being Porsche fanboys, which I guess we kind of are yep. when you think about it. However, something Italian today, clearly, Ferrari 360 Modena. Manual gearbox. And a manual one. Not too many of those around, and we have one here today. Six-speed, gate gearbox. It should be nice to drive. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go. As everybody knows, the heart of any Ferrari is its engine, so that seems a good place to start. So before we start blabbering on about spherical bearings and titanium conrods, let's just get Mark to take it for a bit of a spin and see what it's like. Let's roll forward the clock 24 hours and find out a bit about the car. Hello viewers, day two of our adventure. Yesterday sunny, today rainy. So if you see some continuity faults where the weather's changing, apologies in advance. And I'm still doing that uh, traditional Ferrari manual cold gearbox shift and having to miss second and go straight to the, because this car still does that as well. That's a throwback to the yeah. past, isn't it? Yeah, once it's got a, a you know, a few kilometres on it, it's okay. I think the first Ferrari to have the engine under glass, I think the other one was the F40 that, that did precede it. So in every Ferrari since then is uh, certainly a mid-engine car, is an engine that you can see, uh, which is kind of cool, I think. So, as we know, the heart of any Ferrari is? Of course, the engine, uh, 3.6 litre. And the flat plane crank gives it that, that characteristic sound. It's it does, just a yeah. particular sound. Yeah, Five valves per cylinder, titanium conrods. Yeah. Nice, nice medium capacity, 3.6 litres, not a very big V8, but that means it's very free revving, it's an over square motor. Yeah, well the red line's at 8.5, it, it does have a really sweet engine note, it has a much different engine note to, you know, 5 litre V8, it doesn't have that deep uh, rumbly noise that you expect with a V8, it really does scream. This is what it sounds like. <laughs> clack through the gate there. Uh, it adds to the theatre, doesn't it, of driving a, a Ferrari gated gearbox. I think it's probably one of the best sounding Ferrari engines ever built. It's not the fastest, but it just has such a sweet note. It's quite a different sound from the 355 that came before it, which, yeah. is, a, which is a real high-pitched scream. Yeah. It's, it's also a much better sound than the 430 engine, in my opinion. It just had a, the 430 had a slightly deeper note. It had a bit more power. It had 490 horsepower. It did. So look, it's a it's a great engine for the era. It was a really a high tech piece of equipment. It's it's a little dated now. In terms of performance, it's nothing like the current Ferraris. It's still it's got 400, 400 horsepower. It's still got 400 horsepower. But this car really, really sings at eight and a half thousand revs. Mm. I raced for a little while. The uh, and did a couple of tarmac rallies in the 360 Stradale version of this car. Yep. Slightly different exhaust and slightly different engine configuration, but uh, just the engine note was just superb in that car. And this is the same. But I think one of the great 
great things about the 360, it was probably the first Ferrari you could use as a, as a daily driver if you want to. I know people who do. And, um, you know, a lot of the earlier cars, they were a little nasty in traffic and not great, and clutches were hard to use. This car you can just drive every day. It's very firm suspension, but over bumpy roads like we're on now, it's still quite nice, it's not unpleasant. I drove it yesterday, yeah. and it was really easy. And, and I love this gated gear change because yeah. you can really push it through hard and it always ends up exactly where it's meant to be. And it really encourages you to go snack, snack, snack. Yeah. It was one of, the, one of the last versions of Ferrari that you could get a manual gearbox in. The, there was a few 430s that had a, manuals, they're very, very rare. Yep. I know a few people have converted 430 F1 paddle shifts to manuals. That's a big job. So just uh, to be clear, the F1 paddle shift is an automated manual. Yeah, the... well, it's, an, it's the, the gearbox is exactly the same. It's a manual gearbox, computer control clutch, essentially. First generations of those transmissions are in these cars and also the 355 just before this. Good. I remember driving them at the time thinking they were fantastic. Mm. And that's why there's not a lot of manuals of these around, because every, when they were new, everyone wanted paddle shift. Everyone wanted F1. Yep. No one want, wanted manuals anymore, but 20 years later, it's all turned around, hasn't it's it? It's turned around. Everyone wants a manual. It's all retro, and we love the feeling of the gate gearbox yeah. clicking and clacking through the gate there. Yeah. This car has had the gate actually modified slightly, so it really enables you to shift even faster, and you're never going to miss a shift at all. Is that the shaving of these little little elements here? Yeah. So they've had a little bit a little bit of a lead in on each of those um, yeah. gates. It's really good gear change. It's a wonder that more manufacturers haven't done that. It just looks so good. Yeah. So they're quite sought after now. They're a bit of a premium on price, probably good. Yep. At least 15% more than the F1s. You feel that? You know that, uh, that noise is just superb. That's worth the price of admission for Ferrari. You can look right through the corner. That eight pillar is quite small. It really doesn't get in the way. It does. It does put a smile on your face. It really does, doesn't it? The clutch has a really lovely feel. Uh, it's not heavy at all. A daily driving point of view, you're not going to get a, a cramp in your left leg just using it like you used to get with some old Ferraris. Non-original stereo, unfortunately. It'd be nice if it had the original stereo in there. When you've got that engine sitting behind you, you don't really need to listen to music. I just like the quality, like this casting for the gear stick is, you can see that's a really solid bit of aluminium. It, really it does look like plastic, but it is all aluminium casting, so yeah. it's nicely done. The same up here on the same dash. Up, yeah. These yeah. plastic events have got really sticky as they've got old. This is one of the problems with Ferraris of this year, and even, even some later ones. All the sticky touch surfaces, all the plastic, all the doorknobs, all the controls, they're just terrible in the Australian sun. It's about $3,000 to take all the soft surfaces off, get them retreated. It's absolutely worth doing, and that'll be done in the next month or so, and that will really make a big difference to the uh, interior of the car. Which leads to the topic of the cost of ownership of these cars. A lot of people will be spooked going, oh, Ferrari, $5,000 oil change. Is that a myth? Well, it really is with the, with the 360. Yearly servicing charges, $1,400, $1,500, oil changes and so on. A clutch, worst case scenario, is between probably four or five thousand dollars. If you drive the car properly, if you use the clutch correctly, it'll last for a long, long time. That was the problem with the F1 paddle shift, wasn't it? Because the car's been driven slowly, hill starts and so on, the automatic clutch yeah. is, sl is slipping a lot and you can't avoid it that. It was, yeah. So it was a real problem with those cars and the driver had no real control over that. It was down to the robot to really control it and it really didn't do it that well. One of the big things with the 360, which is a departure from all the earlier Ferraris, was the cam belts. The cam belts on any Ferrari engine need to be done fairly regularly every three to five years. This car's just been done. A relatively simple and straightforward job with the 360. You take the seats out and you can get into the front of the engine through the cabin here, so the engine doesn't have to come out. All Ferraris prior to that, 355s, 308s, engine had to come out. Expensive job. So cam belts for this car are at about between three to four thousand dollars every three to five years. So um, yeah, that's not that bad really when you think about it. It's funny the earlier cars are still higher in value than this, like a three five five in Australia. It's it's not uncommon to see them three hundred thousand dollars, which is an absolute is. fortune. Yeah. So given that the three five fives are more expensive, do you reckon that'll change over time as these ones become more more collectible? 
Well, I think it will. These, these are increasing in value already, even in the last six months. I think they probably will catch up to the 355s. In, in many ways, people love the 355s. They were a really pretty car. These are a better car to drive, in my opinion. They're certainly easy to work on. They, they cost a lot less to own and to run. And I think those attributes will add value to this car over time, particularly if you've got a manual version. How many for sale in Australia that you've found? Sales, I think manuals, I believe there's only about three yeah. out there, and I think the prices range from about 245 to I think 265. Might not be too late to get one. They haven't topped out in value anyway. There's still a bit of growth there for yeah. sure. The, the other car we used as a camera car yesterday was the Cayman, which is worth less than a fifth of what this car is. And driving it home yesterday, I actually felt very similar. Yeah. It, this car does not feel like a 911 though to drive, does it? That's a quite a different feel. It's vastly different. Yeah, it's a mid-engined car, like the Cayman. Yeah, you can really feel the engines right behind your shoulders there. The centre of gravity is right there. There it is, in case you hadn't noticed. There's me waving at the engine. It's a 21-year-old car, Stu, so we can't compare it to the 458 Speciale that we've used a few times. No. If you haven't uh, seen that review, please check yeah, it out. Take a look. because There it is. So if you're wondering why I'm gearing down here, 60k speed 60K's camera, now. if I'm doing 62 there, I will get a ticket. Welcome to Australia. It's not very fast in a Ferrari. You can find yourself backwards through a hedge, as they like to say in England, in one of these, if you get a little bit too uh, over-exuberant with the throttle pedal. Yeah. I think if you drove it on a racetrack, which we won't do, you would see the shortcomings of the vehicle. The brakes are tiny by comparison to modern cars. 400 horsepower on a racetrack really doesn't go that far these days either. So uh, this is a beautiful car to drive on the weekend uh, and just to enjoy the experience of driving a Ferrari. Yeah. It's got a really nice firm brake pedal. And that's that's really important from a driver's point of view. Not a lot of torque down low, but it just keeps pulling, doesn't it? Yeah, it's good. not a lot of torque, but even at 8,000 revs, it's still actually pulling. That goes really well, doesn't it? Oh. Up to, that was eight and a half thousand. Uh, a really nice fast gear shift. Uh, just rewards accuracy and it, re it rewards precision with clutch and throttle. Yeah. Uh, it really gets up and goes really well, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's it's not four or five eight, of course, but it's all relative. I think this car's a really well-rounded package in terms of power, grip, and brakes. Yep. It actually rides really well. Better than your M2. It's better than the M2 on these roads, believe it or not. Yeah, some of these potholes are really massive and we really don't want to crash through them. No. But really, once you get over about 4,000 revs, it just gets another life. When you get up over 8, it really does sink, doesn't it? The 360s have upper and lower A-arms on front and rear. Yeah. Spherical bearings on the outside uh, and flam block on the inside, which is a much stiffer, more resilient material on the inner mountings of the wishbone. So you're talking race driver to talk now, aren't you? I'm getting a little bit technical, but that really gives you that feeling and you can feel it in yeah. you know how responsive the steering is and that's all down to that that suspension layout of the front. I'll vouch for that view as it, yeah. it's, it's a really delightfully pointy and that, car. And that flam block technology is carried through to current Ferraris as well so it was kind of pioneered here. It's such a good thing you know where that corner goes because you just can't see it. It's nice through there, isn't it? And then all of a sudden, dead stop. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Thank you for looking after the car. Uh, yes. The owner appreciates it. We're not going to go crashing through those, I'm afraid. No. Really puts the power down well, Stu. You feel when you get on the throttle, the back just really squats down nicely. Having owned a 996 Carrera, the same vintage exactly, it's slightly quicker, I'd say. It's probably more yeah. akin to the GT3. Well, it's similar to the GT3. You know, when I was racing, the early 996 GT3 in Nations Cup here in Australia. Uh, the competitor car was this car, the 360 Modena. It wasn't a challenge, there wasn't a, yeah. 
the Estradale, it was just a standard car. So I would position the, this car against the GT3. Yep. The engine, I think it's 10 inch flywheel clutch. Uh, it, it drops revs, it spins up and down very, very quickly, which is in fact is exactly what you want with an engine, don't you? But what it does is it really encourages smooth, fast gear shifts. And you can do that with a gate gearbox here. You've just got to get right, and that's part of the challenge. Although driving in traffic every day, you're not banging it through the gears. Um, but that first to second is hard to get a nice smooth gear shift doing it slowly. I notice also it seems fairly under tired at the front. It's only got 215 section tyres at the front, which are quite small. 275s at the rear, it's a big difference. Yeah, That's... it is. And uh, like most Ferraris, really, it's a little bit of an issue with, with even the current Ferraris. They're, they're all under tired at the front. All the race cars. They have a much wider uh, tyre on the front. Look, it's not an issue for driving on the road. Certainly, if you were driving on the track, you would feel that straight away. So one thing, Stu, we've already discussed, but it's a fairly rudimentary traction control system, ASR, here on the Ferrari. Yeah. It really does intervene at a very low level, but if you go to sport mode there, it just bumps that up a bit. Because there are points there where you just need to give, you, give the car that little bit of throttle just to keep the back of the car driving. And if you're not in sport mode, that traction control just kicks in and it just doesn't give you the drive you want. So I could see you get, getting into trouble when you're driving in a spirited fashion, wanting a little bit of throttle, wanting a bit of drive on the rear. That old fashioned traction control kicks in and gives you nothing. Mm. And I, I could see the back of the car getting unloaded really quickly. So mm. bump it up into sport mode. I think you'll drive it there pretty much all the time. Can you turn it off completely? You can turn it off completely. This car would, will actually respond to that. Um, on the track? On the track, definitely. On a nice smooth road, I, I probably would turn it off. Yeah. And it just gives you that extra drive on the rear. But in sport mode, it bumps it up to a fairly high level anyway. So, yeah. Unless you were towing your caravan or towing your boat out of the water no, and right. you needed the wheel spin. Is there a tow ball option on this car? Do you know? I think probably I bet that's not. something you probably don't know. No, I actually don't know the answer. Aha, we caught him. Mate, you've got to do your research working with amateurs. Let's just not use this car for towing caravans, shall we? So this, this car has some fairly desirable options. It has the enameled Ferrari shields on the guard. They're embossed into the guard, so they're not stickers. A lot of the ones you see are their 360s and 430s, which are just stickers. It has Daytona seats. They look pretty cool. They're a bit more comfortable, and it just gives you a little bit more support, and they, you know, they really do look the part. It's got the answer exhaust, which is an aftermarket exhaust, as we discussed. Adds a little bit to the engine mode. And a challenge rear grille. A lot of them have the challenge grills. So they were a bit almost lard ass in the back. Yep. With the big original grill on the back. So the challenge grill really does help. Um, the other thing that makes it special that I really like, it's not Rosso Corso. It's it's silver. Yeah. It's uh, Argento Nurburgring. Silver. Argento, Nurburgring silver. Yeah, correct. It's not midlife crisis uh, Rosso Corso, <laughs> is it? A couple of bald guys driving around in a red Ferrari. Yeah, resale red. It's a bit more acceptable to have other colours these days. Inside the car, just looking around, it's wide, isn't it? Styling-wise, the earlier cars before 2000 were a lot more angular, you know, pop-up headlights, that kind of thing. And what's more, they've fixed a whole lot of things. The aircon works better. You're not sitting in a sideways driving position. Well, there's a lot of parallels, and it was that year, wasn't it, when Porsche went from 993 to 996 from a very Volkswagen-ish pedals across to the left, steering wheel in a weird place, it's everything being ergonomically correct. Sorry about that Porsche people, but I love yeah. 993s as well. 355 to 360 was the same. The, the ergonomics were right, steering wheel's in the right place, pedals aren't offset. Um, so they really thought about that. You know, there was more of these built. I think there was 8,800 built worldwide. Manuals, yeah, there's not that many around. I'm feeling pretty privileged right now. Let's get off this road and get to go find some twisties. Let's do it. like a Dino, I think they've done that deliberately back in the day. It kind of hasn't dated, has it, as much as a 996 Porsche has, even though I love 996 Porsches. Yeah. You jump in one of those these days, it feels quite dated. Um, 
this car doesn't feel it's kind of timeless and as you say pre-retro is a good is a good term one of the things i like about ferrari going back for generations now is the history that they build into each car there's there's dna in each of their cars even yeah. when it comes down to the name like the 360 modena that we're driving yeah the reason it's called modena enzo ferrari's birthplace do i really care where some grumpy old man was born i think when it's enzo ferrari you do when you're driving a ferrari yeah you do actually it's probably helpful at this point to have a super quick refresher of the history of these sports cars over the last 45 years. Okay, let's go. First came the 308 back in 1975. It was 11 years before we finally got the very similar 328, also a Pininfarina design. For the 348, they turned the engine from transverse to longitudinal, and designer Leonardo Fioravanti added a whole range of strakes and design elements from the F40 and Testarossa. Very 1980s. In 1995, Pininfarina returned to design the beautiful F355. At the turn of the century, the 360 Modena arrived. A lot of the sharp angles disappeared, as did the pop-up lights. This is the car we have today. The 430 was next. Big step up in power, more downforce, longer, heavier, wider, and the first appearance of the Manettino on the steering wheel. Then in 2009, the magnificent 458 Italia. Last of the normally aspirated cars, and you can still see Pininfarina's design influence. What a gem. Then in 2015, the turbos appeared and the gloves really came off. I've spent some time in these and they are just, no other word for it, ballistic. And finally, when COVID arrived, so did the F8 Tributo. That's an awkward way to express it, wasn't it? Too much to mention, but just take it from me, more of everything, except weight, which came down, and drag, which also came down. And you said you saw the latest FA Tributo and at the track the other day. I yeah. drove one the other day on the track. They're really fast. Um, you know what? I didn't really like it that much. Uh, yeah. I, it was just almost a bit sterile. I, 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 some, somehow it's lost a little really? bit of character um, for I me. Find, I find them quite raw, though, particularly the, the gruff turbo sound and the torque they've got yeah. and so on. Maybe I need to do some more driving on it. was only a brief drive, but... Um, I think you didn't like all the screens they got. Yeah, the screens and stuff, it was all a bit over the top. Yeah. <laughs> Showing your age, dude. Yeah, I am. So that's it. So here's our score. Uh, we've had a good chat about this, and it's one of the few cars that has broken 20 on our score. Anything that gets over 20 is, yeah. is a car worth Doing putting well. in the garage. So that's not to say ones that are less than 20 are not, but this one, yeah, it's a, it's a keeper. But the reason we've scored the price value the way we have is it is expensive, but they're holding their value and even going up, so that's why the price scored where we did in the mid range there. All right, well, that's it, folks. That's our review of the Ferrari 360 Moderna. Thank you for being so circumspect and looking after it. The owner will be very pleased with you. And let's head back into the bad weather and go home. Hey, if you're enjoying our shows, please share them with your friends. Like and subscribe. You know the drill. You've heard it by everybody else. It's bye from Mark. Cue Mark saying goodbye. And it's bye from me. And we'll see you next time. Oh, hey, you made it right through to the end of the video. Congratulations. Thank you for watching. If you like what you see, please share it with your motoring friends. And above all, click the little subscribe thing down here so you can see the latest videos when we bring them out, hopefully each week. I look forward to seeing you soon.